Hello, okay. So uh, today I want to talk about one of these locks. Um, a push button, a manual push button lock. So I just want to talk a little bit about how they work. Maybe on another video I'm going to show how to bypass this kind of lock. Um, <clears throat> so basically you start with a number of pins like this. You see that these pins are a different colour. These pins are a different colour than these three and this one. This one's completely different. This is like the cancel the reset button. Now what we find is is that these are all in banks of two. two uh, so in a lock you'd have two, 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 two like this <clears throat> to resemble this keypad. And the idea is, is that, just to demonstrate, um, this line is a bar, which is the equivalent of the locking pole. And what happens is this, if I can get this to work. Um, these, which is the equivalent of your pins or wafers, would all be in a line lined up like this, the bar is able to pass through them. Now, these three, I've just got them in the same order, it doesn't really matter. Normally you'd obviously have them at random numbers. So, you can see that there's a, let's bring this one down. You see there's a cutout on the bottom of this one. And there's no cutout at the top. And all these pins, all these wafers are identical. Now these three are different because it's blank at the bottom and a cutout at the top. It's the opposite way around. So the idea is, is that uh, the, these are either side of a bar and the bar passes through these. And the idea is that you punch a random code in and it does like this, which now means you've bl blocked the bar from passing through. It's not going to go through anyway because these ones are also blocking the bar uh, from passing through these slots. Now, you punch the right combination in, this one, this one and this one you fi now find that each of these are able to pass through the bar. In fact, all of them have a gap cut out, which means the bar can pass through them easily. And obviously you randomly push one, one wrong one, and it's going to stop the bar from traveling through the slots. Now you can, this kind of lock, this kind of lock, you can, doesn't matter which order you punch them in, as long as you get the right three, you know, if it's one, two, three, then you, you push one, two, three, two, one, three, three, two, one, three, one, two, it doesn't matter, and you're going to end up with the same combination which will open the lock. <clears throat> now I've taken uh, one of these apart, this is what you normally see, preferably without losing all the springs. Excuse me, just not to spring, put him in. Just to do that for now. You when you end up pushing these buttons, it gives you a combination. See, the bar passes down the middle. When you push the buttons, you're lining up these. So I've taken it apart to save time. These springs are where the pins are that would push. These buttons push the pins. This line in the middle is where the bar travels. Um, and obviously this hole is where the lock it, the knock turns that pushes, releases the mechanism. So I'm just going to zoom out a minute while I show you this.
<clears throat> now, this is what it looks like on the inside. Okay. Now, as a rule, this is attached on here. This is normally here, inside, and here's the crank mechanism, like a cam, that pushes up uh, the bar inside. Now, normally you would have a you'd have a spring here as well, which helps to um, push down like the sliding bar. So what happens is you push the buttons and they go down these slots and they stick as they go into position. Now, I'll just take this off and show you. Um, oops. Here's the bar that should, when he's in the right position, and get him in. He should be free to slide up and down. So the idea is he should be free to slide up and down this. And there's usually a spring up here that pushes him down. And we can take this off. The cam mechanism uh, hits him here, pushes it up, and this goes up and releases, allows it to turn this to turn, which opens a door on the uh, <coughs> on one of these. Okay. Now the idea is is that. Those wafers are all sitting in here. Now this is how it works. Do you remember I said that this is the bar? Let me zoom on that. Is that focused? So the idea is, is that you'll notice these little springs, kind of a bit sticking out either side. What they do is, they these two is they this is basically in this position so they can pass through here yeah, nice and easy then when you push the button down it goes here and it catches and it's not going it's not a great focus is it there you go that rubbish off my finger. So this is its standing position. Like this. And it can pass through. I'm trying to get a good focus there. When you push the button it goes here and it will stop it. So if you push the wrong button. Of course this is in the standing position here. And it won't pass. And when you push the right button. It creates a gap allows it to pass through and it goes slides through this way and it allows uh, this, uh, this then slides up through here and it operates this this then is allowed to travel and when this moves up, it releases this cam and it allows the cam to move. And as the cam moves, sorry, as the cam moves, it's normally got a knob on it like this. As, the, as you can move the cam, it operates a bar, like a tailpiece that goes through this. Obviously then this will turn and it will release your latch. It's as simple as that. That's how simple these work. Now obviously these latch mechanisms have this extra bar and if they're fitted properly uh, when the door closes like this for example if the against the door jam it closes and then it releases when it goes into the, the slot in the door jam like this 
and this part remains compressed if it's fitted properly which means that you can't shim the door there's no way of it's locked so eventually tries to slide a I'm trying to see if I find something here Use the ruler. Somebody tries to slide a shim in to get the door open. This is not going to go because if you don't fit it properly and you allow this this bar to go inside the door, uh, the door post where this bolt locks, you'll suddenly find that you can still shim the door. Something to shim the door with like this. And it's very important when these are fitted, this is depressed and it locks this so you can't be shimmed or from this side you can't pull it open. So basically that is how one of these locks work. And all you are doing is, goes like this. All you're doing when you push these buttons, you're depressing these in the right position. Actually, these three, all these ones in the dead, in the standard neutral position, it's an open. These three are blocking it from opening. And when you push the right three, you create that channel through those where the bar can pass and open the door. Now, just one more thing to add here because these videos, whoa, it's very long. Um, I'm going to show you how to bypass these so that you're able to find the code and gain access. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll show you that in the next video. So thanks for watching. Um, stay tuned and I will uh, maybe do an on-site uh, pick or bypass to one of these locks. Thanks for watching, take care and goodbye.